Right, okay folks, so this is an investment property we own. There was um, a dormer window on the rear elevation here, which is basically sitting on a sheet of um, chipboard and the rafters. It was dangerous and we had it removed and we had a new roof um, um, on the property and also a new Velux window. Here's the bedroom under a tarp once the roof had been um, removed and you can see the remnants of an old stud wall there, which we had removed in order to enlarge the room. You can see that um, insulation has been put between the rafters and we have a small stud wall there look which we boarded up against in order to um, um, increase the size of the room. Now one of the problems we had is the fact that the old dormer window as I say was believe it or not just sitting on a sheet of chipboard and the rafters and um, this caused them to bow by about three inches so um, we had to have new rafters on the roof and um, it took quite some time actually just to um, pack these things out in order that when we started boarding as you can see here in order that the boards um, were nice and level and I do remember spending quite some time on this and as you'll see from the next few shots that um, you can see how much I've actually had to pack these out in order to get the boards nice and level it did take quite a bit of time but it was certainly worthwhile and um, for anybody who's done any boarding anywhere near a Velux, you will know that you actually have to put the boards on at an angle um, in order to um, you know to fit the um, to fit them correctly and to plaster the, to plaster around them. So um, the boarding has been done now, and here we have a photograph um, once the boarding has been completed. Apart from the bit on the right hand side there, you can see that any joints have been scrimmed over, any gaps have been bonded and um, all edges have um, skin bead. Now one of the first things that I wanted to do was to create a curve on the ceiling where the new boards joined the old ceiling rather than having a defined edge and um, I used multi-finish, a bit, uh, quite a thick layer of multi-finish in order to create the curve which I was looking for and I used a wet brush and a wet trowel in order to feather the, um, the new boards and the old ceiling just to give them the look which I was after and I do remember spending quite some time doing this in order to um, get the curve I was looking for and as you can see from the next few um, photographs I'm well into the plastering now nice thick coat on there and I do recall having to work hard in order to get the um, in, in order to get a nice curve because this is not an easy task for a DIY plasterer this is not an easy task for an amateur but I do just spend quite a bit of time on that and I think it came good and I have some photographs of the finished result um, so yeah very pleased indeed with that and we'll shortly be coming up to some photographs um, once the, um, the first coat had been put on and I was very f pleased indeed with the finished result and um, you know it was a, a nice project um, of a weekend um, I it took me um, a Saturday afternoon just to board it over. I went back on the Sunday afternoon the following day and plastered it over. Here we have a, pla um, a photograph of me putting on the roughing on coat on the walls. I always do the ceilings first because if you do the walls first and then you do the ceilings, you know if you drop any plaster it just spoils the walls. It just seems pointless to me. So. Um, this is an enjoyable task, um, but it wasn't a three-story house and humping buckets of wet plaster up three stories wasn't easy. This is the finished result look and you can see from the, um, the plaster it's starting to go white. It's starting to dry out and um, the fact that the Velux window was open, you know, once you start getting a draft through a window or a door, it does actually help the plaster to dry out considerably and you can see that from the wet patches. Here's Poppy, one of our cats with a nice fluffy tail. She was well impressed with the finished job. And now I've got some photographs of the plaster once it actually been painted over and I think the reason that's important is quite simply because it's all right showing photographs of a job once you've actually plastered but you only really truly know what the how good the finished result is once you've painted it up because that will show any blemishes or any imperfections and I was really pleased with the finished result here and uh, bearing in mind that I'm a DIY plasterer you know I'm an amateur I do not do this for a living and now we'll be coming up to some footage of the room once it had been painted over and um, once again as I say very pleased indeed with the finished result I think it came good and I was chuffed to bits with the finished result 
this um, footage is pre-YouTube. When I actually did this job, I didn't know that I'd be having a YouTube channel. If not, the video footage would be more detailed and um, it would give you better indications to um, the actual finished result. But look, you know, um, I'm just giving a commentary on a previous plastering job, which I've done. Um, I think I did a cracking job, given the fact that I am an amateur, but I'm gonna leave it for you, the viewer, to decide whether or not this job was fit for purpose, whether it's worthwhile doing myself rather than getting a professional in to do it, if you think it was, if you think the job, the finished result was a success, please give this video the thumbs up and thank you for watching.